Gang Girls Wrestling Asylum here at the Casino at Dania Beach. Already sold out, and one of the reasons why it is is because you got this guy, formerly known as Hornswoggle. Dylan, great to be here. Thank right. you so much for coming down for this super show and all. What's it like, first of all, being here at Gang Girls Wrestling Asylum and here in South Florida? So I, I uh, this is my first time, I believe, in South Florida outside of WWE. And I saw, like, it was at a casino. I go, ah, oh, no, nah, it's going to be this little, like, amp this is a casino. I already donated, which sucks. <laughs> but, uh, and it's like, it's, it's just... I'm excited. I get to see Gangrel and hang out with him again, and Scotty Steiner has become a buddy of mine. I get to hang out with him, so it's it's gonna be a good day. Yeah, what is Dave like? Dave has done so much in the business, and now he's training wrestlers. He's running shows. Yeah, he's he's busier now than I think he ever was. Between wrestling every weekend and then training during the week, pretty much every day, it's uh, he's got a busy life. Speaking of busy life, you've been busy yourself yeah. doing a lot of things. Now you have a book coming out. So I want to get yes. with this and all. You were born with, you say it because I'm going to get it wrong. Achondroplasia. It's, it's a, uh, a condition it's the, causing disproportionate dwarfism. Yes. It's the number one. It's like the most common uh, kind of dwarfism. Achondroplasia is. Now I'm going to read something from ECW yeah. Press because the book is Life is Short and So Am I. Yeah. <laughs> I like the title. Really good I was title. very, that was, uh, that was the one thing I was really, really head strong on is I, I need this to be the title. So it, I'm glad I made it. That's great. So now people born with this don't tend to end up as champions in the world of professional wrestling. In fact, only one man has ever achieved this, becoming the WWE World Wrestling Entertainment Cruiserweight Champ at the age of 21 and he's four foot five. And that's the man you're looking at right here, Hornswoggle. Yeah. Hornswoggle, what was that like for you, being able to do that? And, I mean, that's just an incredible feat on its own. Yeah, it, from the age of four, all I wanted to do was be a pro wrestler. And uh, I had complication as a kid where, <clears throat> because of my achondroplasia, I had a very curved spine. And I had uh, surgery on my back. It paralyzed me. Uh, was told no contact sports and or no and no trampolines. Somehow I didn't listen to the doctors, and I somehow accomplished the crazy dream that I wanted to do. It was like I was so young. I was, I was 19 when I got hired, six days before my 20th birthday, and uh, yeah, it was, it was insane. It still is like to think about. Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Nothing comes out of there besides bib overalls. That's it. And, but me, it's, it's pretty cool. It's a, it's a really neat thing that happened. I, mean, I never take that for granted. What do you think was that moment in time where it was like, hey, the heck with what doctors said. I'm going to, not only pro wrestling, just no, I'm going to go the through minute, this. The minute I wanted to be a pro wrestler. Like I, I wanted to be a pro wrestler, and then I got surgery, and I still didn't have that the dream. Couldn't go away. I wasn't gonna let it, and it's uh, I wasn't gonna let anyone tell me no at that point. What was it like growing up in Wisconsin and family, friends? Yeah, like everyone's there. My family's there. My friends are there. My company's there. My son is there. That's just uh, I've been all around the world and nothing, nothing feels like home. I've. I, I carry Wisconsin and especially Oshkosh with a lot of pride. That's I'll never talk about Oshkosh in a negative way. It's, it's my home. It's to me, it's the greatest place on earth besides Orlando, Florida for Disney. <laughs> but uh, Osh, that, that, that even that's a strong number two. But it's Oshkosh, man. It's just it's it's my home. I, I I can get where I want to be in five minutes. There's no traffic. It's great. I have everything I need. You mentioned Disney, and it strikes a chord with Alexa Bliss and Zack Ryder are huge Disney fans. Yeah. Where would you rank yourself among Man, you know, like that's, that for that's Disney? crazy things. Even living in Wisconsin, I still, like, at times I go, oh, what if I got annual passes? But I go once a year. But I think it's just because I want to say I have annual passes. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm right up there. I really am, and that's the only, Orlando's the only place I would move, because and only because of Disney. 
Um, I surprise my son every year. We do a surprise trip. Uh, it started as three days, and now it's turned into five days. And I think next year it's gonna be six days. And it's uh, but it's awesome. Like he he's becoming the the Disney fan fanatic that I am. Well, we just saw Lion King yet yeah, literally yesterday, and it was absolutely amazing. Like it's just. It's cool to be able to experience these things now with the next generation, as cliche as that is. It's awesome. I love it. You mentioned about moving to Orlando. That's interesting because you also have Disneyland out in California. You have Euro. You have Disney all over the world, basically. Yeah. But you really, Orlando would be the place if there was any. Oh yeah, place yeah, for yeah. And and it's uh, we're thinking. I was thinking about doing California next year, but I, it's like it's like cheating. It's like I'm cheating on my girlfriend there. I, I can't do that. Maybe a second trip of the year, but it's uh, I, I just I love it. I love traveling. I love doing that with him. It's, it's become our thing. Do you two have a favorite ride or a favorite character or anything? Everything. Like that? Literally everything. Uh, he loves Hollywood Studios, and and we just it's literally our bond. And I I say, man, I'm so thankful that I have a good kid because every day, out of random, he'll just say. Hey, thanks, thanks for this. Thanks for bringing me here. This is really cool. I don't have a kid that's crying and wanting this toy and this, and why are we not at the front of the line, and I can't see this, and we didn't do that. No, he's just like, all right, what's tomorrow? We're all done today. What are we doing tomorrow? Okay, we're flying home. Sweet. What time do we need to get up? That's all it is, and then it's back to normal life of hanging out at home, playing with wrestling figures. That's, that's what we do. Does he have a favorite... WWE superstar currently. Uh, Kofi Kingston, probably because he. I mean, man. The 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 funny thing, the cool thing is, Kofi has uh, his oldest son Kai, um, and Landon, my son. Landon is I think three years older than Kai, but they're best friends that have never met. They only know each other through FaceTime. Like when they are, but they they've grown up together through FaceTime. Kofi would be on his, with his boy, and I'd be on mine, and we just literally turn to each other, and it, so probably Kofi, uh, and then Finn Balor. He loves Finn. He loves Finn. It, lately, it's Ricochet, because Ricochet is this, the, the new superhero of the Mighty Mouse, but uh, he loves Finn, and, and he just loves wrestling. He loves wrestling, and he's, he grew up in it. It's his, it's his life. It's his dad's life, and it's kind of his life, too. I don't know if that's a great, good thing, but to me it is. I was going to say this for later on, but since we're yeah. talking about him, I'm going to ask this now. So what happens when he becomes older and he says, okay, you know what, Dad, you've got your own wrestling promotion now. Hey, I want to try this. I want to do this. Oh, he's, he's in, we had a ring day two days ago. He was in the ring for an hour just trying things. Dad, I'm going to do a moonsault at nine years old. And I go, go, get the crash pad. Your grandma will not like this. <laughs> <laughs> I made sure to send her a video, and she puts "not Nana approved." But it's uh, but it's. I want him. If he wants to do it, he wants to do it. I'm never gonna say, "Hey, you need to do this." Be a lawyer. Be an architect. Be a professional wrestler. Whatever you want to do, man. If he would do it, it would make me really, really happy. But I'm never gonna be like, "Hey, you need to try this." If he grows out of it, he grows out of it. But it's. I think it's, it's such an entrapping, not good with the English language. It's literally pulled him into this crazy world that we all live in, and he's just part of it now. It's awesome. Being from the area in Wisconsin, and you mentioned his grandma. Yep. Come on. Okay. Yeah. That's the girl's yes. Yes. Right there. Correct. So when they're done, put that on that door right there. You never know what's going to happen when we're doing these Always. and all. There's someone coming in. Oh, that was, by the way, Flex Dog Magnum, also part of FSCW, Fantasy Super Cosplay Wrestling, which is really cool stuff. This is actually, I don't know if you've heard about this. And we're going to get back to this yeah. and get done. But actually trained pro wrestlers dress in cosplay, and they wrestle at Comic-Cons. They were just down here in Miami, Florida Supercom, where it originated and all. He was part of that show. Some of the wrestlers here That's part awesome. of the show, and it really, really is a That's fun neat. thing. Okay. It really is a cool thing. All right, so... Wisconsin, you mentioned his grandma. When you were growing up, how important was it 
for you with your family. What did your family think when you said, you know what, this is something I'm going to do. I want to try the pro wrestling. Uh, my grandpa always was like, yeah, he's going to be a pro wrestler. My dad was always, my dad was always never like not supportive. He was nervous because of my back problems. He didn't want to see me paralyzed. I take, if something hits with this rod in my back, I'm paralyzed, done. And uh, that was his biggest worry. And as a parent, I get it now. But my grandpa was like, no, he's, he told my, would tell my dad all the time, Eric, he's gonna do this. He's gonna do this. And uh, so the first person I called was my grandpa. I like, got signed. And then I called my dad. It was like, but it, it, they were all supportive. All supportive, but they were worried. Um, as parents should be. And especially parents of someone with the medical history that I had at the time. How did you deal with it mentally? Well, you're out there, you're traveling the road okay. all the time. I, I've never thought about hurting my back. Never, never once have I thought, can't do this because of my back. I don't care. If I'm going to get hurt, I'm going to get hurt. And if it's because of this, it's meant to be. I always believe, like, this, is, this happens for a reason. I'm still doing it for a reason, for some crazy reason, but I'm still doing it, I'm still having fun. I, yeah, I, I meant, I've, I'm meant to do this. Mentally, it's not an issue at all with you. Bit. You just get out there never, and you go, I've hey, never, I'm going out there and have yeah, fun and I'm going to do my thing. I've never thought about, what if this hurts my back? Never. And everything has been fine, other than here and there, obviously. Like yeah. any pro wrestler, you're going to get injuries here and there and things like that. But for you, everything is bit, yeah, crazy. knock on what is right with that. When you were young, were you bullied as a youth? No. And that's the crazy thing. I was never bullied. And I think it was because I was the first one to make fun of myself. Um, and I also had such a good, I always had close friends around me. Like, pardon my French, but fuck them. I got my buddies. I don't need to worry about them. I'm hanging out with these guys on the weekends and after school and watching wrestling and playing video games and doing kid stuff. But I, I, I yeah, I was never bullied and I, it's crazy. Thinking back, it's kind of crazy because I was such an easy target. But I just laughed it off. I didn't let it bother me. The minute you laugh off the bullying and the, you don't sell it, they don't have a reaction. They don't have a reaction? What are they doing then? Exactly. So now they're the dick. Right? How has being a father changed you? Has it changed you? 100%. Um, yeah, I uh, I don't know. Just like, <laughs> it definitely has, but it's hard to put a fingerprint on exactly how. I think I just love sharing my time with him, like experiencing things with him. Last night at a show in Milwaukee, he came with me to the show. He comes, And whenever I'm just drivable, he comes with me every time. That's so awesome. Even if it's like just him and I in the car, we put a movie on, just in the just in the back seat, of course. Movie's playing for him, but then he'll just stop and, all right, how far are we? What are you doing tonight? On the way back, on the drive home before he falls asleep, he'll tell me the positives and negatives about my performance. Usually a lot more negatives, <laughs> but I, I wouldn't have it any other way. He loves selling my merch. Like something easily is that he loves selling my merch. I give him a dollar cut, and so that's probably helps. It's too. incentive. Yeah, <laughs> but he loves. He just loves. He loves being around. I, it's it's very weird to say probably, but he loves being around me. He loves hanging out. We have a bond that's crazy. And called me earlier. He goes, get home at twelve thirty tomorrow. I said, yeah. Okay. He'll call me. I guarantee an hour. Twelve thirty, right? Just to make sure. So, but it's it's awesome. When, I have, when I'm home, I have him. When I'm gone, it sucks. He's a big nine-year-old, as far as mentally. I mean, he's learning the business. He's learning he's other huge. aspects of the business, too. Yeah, but and he's huge. He's so tall, too. He's been in 98th percentile his whole life. I was like, Jesus. <laughs> I looked up at him at seven. He was seven, <laughs> he broke my, my height. I just go, oh, God. Every day, I think, what's, what's wrong with him? What did I do? <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing. You didn't do anything. Yeah, it's awesome. But you know what? When you are, when, when you're going to have a child, though, did you think this is something he may have? Yeah, and it scared me. Uh, 
but we got his mom got an ultrasound at six months where they can see uh, whether or not he's going to be a dwarf and he wasn't. And I was so happy um, just because the medical stuff, the medical stuff in itself. I don't care about the bullying. I'm gonna I would I'm gonna raise him to be stronger than dealing with that anyways. But just the medical stuff is is. I don't want him to deal with that. He go he has to get a shot and I get upset because it's like. The hospital, Ma, you take him. Call my dad. Hey, can you take him to this doctor appointment? Just, I mean, hate hospitals. The book is Life is Short and So Am I. Yeah. What inspired you to all of a sudden, hey, was it your idea? Was someone else's idea or no? Have you journaled your history going back or so, no? It was just something you decided now so to do. So for like a ye my, la my last year in WWE, I was like, I need to do a book. I got to do one. And then I laziness. I didn't want to do it on my own. Um, then I got released and Douglas reached out to me and said, hey, do you want to do this? Uh, so we started. And I wanted to do it because not for sympathy, not for anything. Literally, as crazy as it is, to be able to say, I wrote a book. Got hired by WWE for 10 years. I was in movies, two different movies. Now I wrote a book. It's crazy. It's crazy to me that a kid from Oshkosh did this. And that's like always my thing is I, I just want to, I want to be able to say I did things and that's it. It's just another list, checklist to do that. Hey, not only that, I was a, an author. I yeah, wrote a it's, book. I, it's, uh, it's also kind of cool now because. If Landon does a book report, he can do it on this, and it's going to be the automatic A. Yes. Because <laughs> I dare the teacher to say, hey, this isn't right, and he, I'll, I'll fly into that class. He can bring you in. Yeah. Well, he can bring you in during the book Literally, report. Literally, I'm the book report. Just record me. Just record me. <laughs> That's great. That's another way to think of that. That's awesome. All right, so uh, Wisconsin, and you mentioned Oshkosh. Yeah. So does that mean... Dylan's a big Green Bay Packers fan. You have to be. If you aren't, I'm pretty sure you get kicked out. Um, yeah, I am. I, I wasn't, like, up until probably, like, I was, like, six. I was a six or No, older than that, I was a Dolphins fan. Because my sister was growing up, and I was like, oh, this is a cool team. But then I realized, like, no, I don't really care about them. I don't. And I was a Packer fan. How did that happen, though? Dolphins in Wisconsin. She, I Although we appreciate it. the Dolphins. And I love Dan Marino. Dan Marino. He Dan Marino quarterback. growing up. When I had my back surgery, my mom reached out to him, and he sent an autograph. Uh, it meant a lot to me. So I stayed a Dolphins fan. But then I transferred right into a Packer fan right away. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an incredible team and atmosphere. I guess it's 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 locally owned. I mean, the community owns the team, it's, and you feel it. It's just awesome. Going to games is unreal. Do you have a cheese head? No. I think if you live there, you don't own one. I've realized. <laughs> but everyone, if they're there for a day, they go home with one. Yeah. Or a cheese tie or something. Yeah. You mentioned Dan Marino. I'll throw yep. this into Dan Marino's big WWE fan. Him and his family have been big WWE fans for a while. They would come to shows that. when they were down here. And then he also had an, he had a golf tournament that he did, ran, coordinated, yeah. helped for autism because his son is yeah. autistic. And Sergeant Slaughter actually participated I in the golf Slaughter tournament. I knew Slaughter did. He does all these golf. He Slaughter did his it. own tournament yeah. down in Miami. Okay. But then he also got involved with Dan Marino's awesome. when they asked him. Military, the, the camouflage yeah. of fatigues oh, as he's playing yeah. golf. It was the best. I remember Dan game. Marino was at WrestleMania in Miami, and he did one of the things, and I was like, I need to meet him. I need to meet him. And it didn't work out, and I was so bummed. But that's that's a that's a bucket list. I, I need to meet him. Miz was the champion before that WrestleMania, yes. so he got to do all the press. The so and Miz, an Ohio guy. By the way, so many wrestlers are from Ohio. I, I know there's something in the water in yeah, Ohio. Something's exactly. going on there. But Miz is favorite. They interviewed him a few times, his favorite player growing up, Dan Marino. Dan Marino. So he got to be there and meet Dan Marino. Awesome. You just see his face. Yeah. Like the, not only was he yeah. so excited because he was the champ, yeah. Yeah. but he they got, got to, to meet Dan Marino. Marino. That's it was really, really cool. It was a awesome. really cool moment. All right, so your own wrestling promotion. Tell us about the wrestling promotion. Uh, ACW Wisconsin. Started out of boredom. I was off the road. <laughs> I was off the road with WWE. Uh, 
and I, I, t I texted my two buddies, my best friends, I said, hey, let's run a show. And they go, no. Go, yeah, yeah, I mean, let's do it. Screw it, let's just do it. And they go, sure. We took a chance. And our first show, we had just under 200 people. And we're like, all right. Literally, at the bar that night after the show, we literally all looked at each other and go, another one? Fine. <laughs> and uh, calling on six years now. It's turned that, it's turned into a school, it's turned into, we're doing D League basketball arenas, drawing 2,500 people. It's insane. It's, in, it's absolutely insane and it's awesome um, what it's turned into. And again, we made it community based. It's always in Oshkosh besides a random show here or there. And it's, it's just, we have the Oshkosh M, like, city logo in our logo because it, that's, the city, that's our city. It's never going to change. That's actually cool. And to see how you have big crowds for those events. Yeah. Whether it was 200 the first show, and then three, 350, and then bigger it's shows too, it's is cool. really good. Even back there in the day, did you ever foresee yourself, hey, I'm going to run a school. Hey, I'm going to run shows. No. It was uh, legitimately boredom. And just, let's do something. I know we can, and I know Oshkosh is a wrestling city. Let's take advantage of this. And not only that, but let's give this, these fa wrestling fans and families, because it's a complete family-friendly show, let's give them something to do other than the same local bands at the same bar or the same bowling alley. Gosh, gosh, there's not a lot to do, believe it or not. But it's, so we give them something to do every month on a Friday night, and it's, it's become like a cult following. Is there anyone from, in those six years, that you guys have trained and have gone on to do not other yet. things? Not yet. There are a couple have been on the cusp, but uh, opportunities out of Oshkosh, Wisconsin are fewer and far between. Because you don't hear much about uh, right, you about don't hear Oshkosh, much about Wisconsin, somebody, somebody coming out it's of Wisconsin. Me, uh, Ken Anderson, oh. Silas Young with Ring of Honor. It's, yeah, that's it. That's really it. I mean, basically, you're pioneering something here with wrestling in Wisconsin to try to get more visibility and try to get more people's Just eyes on eyes on. Hey, we're here too. Yeah. Okay, so we'll wrap it up with some WWE stuff, and we'll get you out of here. And thank you so much thank for you. doing this. By the way, life is short, and so am I. This is Dylan's book coming out. It's going to be a really good read. It's about his life. He has so much that it's inspirational. It's about his story. It's about his journey. This It's always so cool when you can put this on paper and people can read about other things happening. One of the things I'd like to know, and I don't know if it's covered in the book. I'm guessing it may be, but whose idea was it for you to come out under the ring? Was, to be honest, we didn't really hit why. Uh, but it was just proposed to me. First they just came up to you and said, hey, hey we want you to... You're up for you to live under the ring. Sweet. All right. And uh, kind of a cool thing is the very first day on the job could have been my last. And I cover it a lot in the book with... I talk... Uh, there's, I, I kind of messed up my first day with Vince. And it's... Uh, it, it just... But somehow, I made it 10 years. And there's a lot of times like that where it, they told me when I got hired, they said, this is, this is a six-month gig. Okay, I'm going to be on TV for six months. Or at least I can say I was on TV once for WWE. But it turned into two weeks under 10 years. It's crazy. What are some of your fondest memories with WWE? Uh, Vince's son, the whole, the whole storyline. The main event of Raw with the boss. The most powerful man in wrestling. Multiple times. Uh, then DX. I was the ran with DX. <laughs> I always say like the coolest thing about it is I would like pinch myself. I would do DX the DX Pyro. And I would just have to like pinch myself because this is like the coolest thing. I was doing this in my bedroom when they came out. Now I'm doing it in the ring on television. Um, and then the the WLC match with Torito and I, it was uh, I'll, I always say I'll never top that. There's never I'll never do any in the ring. I'll never do anything bigger than that. And it was the coolest moment of my in ring career. 
You know what, Dylan, we'll wrap it up with this. Yep. Uh, I think this is interesting. You tell me because you live this. I remember back in the day, Sky Lolo, Little Beaver. You always had smaller wrestlers yep. in pro wrestling. But do you think you helped? I'm not saying they didn't because they were good back in their day. Mm -hmm. Do you think you made it more believable that a smaller wrestler can do this um, and work with bigger athletes? You know, the funny thing is, is I always get asked, how oh, did you watch the Ninja Wrestling back in the day and the, the Skylar Lowe's and the Little Beavers and the Haiti Kids? No, because I didn't want to be a Ninja Wrestler. I want to be a professional wrestler. I want to be a regular, regular wrestler. So I never watched it. I thought it was stupid. Because it, it was always a kind of a joke. And a lot of things I did were the comedy and the entertainment bits. But the crazy thing to think about is I was... I. I was there longer than Angle, Kurt Angle's first run. I was longer, there longer than a lot of these like guys. And it's crazy because, again, it was six months. <clears throat> they told me it was going to be six months. And it turned into this crazy career. And uh, I, think, I think I just showed that there can be more of a shelf life and more of a career in anything that you market, no matter what it is. And I noticed the shirt. And I noticed yeah. the tattoos, just and I'm wondering what is we got some with the shirt was is that just uh, just random Disney villains. Well, and I see right Sklar from the Star from Lion King, Star from Lion King, Jafar and all of them. It's uh, yeah, yeah, it's my life. Any of the tattoos Disney uh, related? Disney. I have a whole bunch on my arm, and then I have my my leg of Muppets <laughs> because of my fanatics, my fanaticism. So you get to see here. Animal Oscar there. The no. Animal. Animal. No, no uh. Sesame Street stuff. <laughs> but it's, uh, I always say I'm a 33-year-old child. You are, yes. But, um, I, I, dress I think up. that's why people like it, too. Yeah, I, I, I dress up and bite people on the butt for a living. I can't take myself too seriously. <laughs> hey, I think you do more than that. Thank you. All right, so Life is Short and So Am I, yeah. ECW Press. Everybody got to check out the book. Is there any social media or anything like that you want to mention? Uh, check out the book on Amazon. Um, order pre-order it now or order it when it comes out. And then uh, Twitter at WWE Hornswoggle because they haven't taken away the WWE yet, thankfully. So, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. You're doing the quiet. Exactly. Thank you so much for taking Thanks. the time. Appreciate Enjoy everything today with Gaining Rolls Wrestling. It's a big show at the casino at Dania Beach. Thank you.